Hey, I'm Dan and uh, this is a video response to the question What do you do when your main drive belt in your car or truck is loose or squeals? Well, let's get to it. If you're as unlucky as me and you have a cross-mounted engine since this is a f uh, front wheel drive then uh, you might run into space problems uh, just like me and I'm honestly not looking forward to ever change this belt which I'll have to do soon. Anyways, um, didn't take me long to find the um, belt tensioner but um, yeah it is hidden so well and so impossible to reach with a ratchet that um, I will end up buying a special tool for just this occasion um, you can see the um, ratchet socket right there and uh, the belt tensioner itself um, and yeah it is obviously not a good spot to work in so I hope you have it a little bit easier and you have an inline engine and that is the next thing we will um, look at now before we start taking the belt off um, make sure that you either have the proper picture either in the truck in your uh, manual or um, in the engine compartment like it is here or just draw a picture yourself to make sure you know how um, the belt goes back on because um, yeah if you haven't done this before it might be um, possible to figure out which way the belt was on okay so what do we need for the job well on this particular one we have a half inch uh, drive ratchet with a long handle gives us clearance and we don't hurt our hands plus we don't need a lot of force to um, get this tensioner loose and we have a light um, on other cars you may run into um, 3 8 drive sockets on the belt tensioner so it's obviously smaller make sure you use the right one obviously you won't be able to fit the half inch drive in um, your 3 8 but it may just feel right to have the 3 8 and a half inch and um, you think you got right and you just hurt yourself so make sure you use the right uh, ratchet on that we got the uh, ratchet on that socket you do not want this to look like that it uh, might just it may even just um, hurt you when you slip off and you get caught into something so always make sure it is in there and all we got to do is find out which direction this uh, tensioner will loosen our belt and which I already did in this case I have to pull the tensioner up and we should definitely do this with a lot of feeling if we are too harsh on the tensioner we uh, could break the socket that cast socket the ratchet fit in and uh, that would be very bad we do not want to pry on any of the pulleys because what can happen is we either break the pulleys or we um, break the bearing in the pulley and uh, some of them are cheap some of them are very costly so pay attention to that um, once you have the belt off check your pulleys you uh, want to make sure they spin freely nicely and uh, you don't have noises in them check your alternator bearing very important as well as just idler bearings they're the most common uh, failure and noise makers um, they just have little bearings in them and make sure they don't have free play make sure they don't have any noise and run quiet like this one perfect and um, check your belt tensioner then when you loosen the belt if the belt tensioner feels very sloppy you should replace it the belt tensioner pre-adjusts the load on your belt there's nothing else you can do on new cars that is all you have to have tension on the belt if the spring in the tensioner is screwed then your um, belt tension will not be right and there's your squeal um, also when the belt is loose um, check your fan just pull on the fan make sure there's no free play in it um, wet spots on the bottom of that pulley will indicate a bad bearing so all together just check your bearings and um, all that's left if you still have a squeal is the belt itself make sure there are no cracks in it and make sure it is not hard 
um, when you have a hard old belt then uh, it just skips all the uh, pulleys that will be rather hard to turn like the uh, steering pump or um, air conditioning or uh, even your alternator. What I want you to make sure when you got your belt back on is that all the grooves are covered. The belt is not sitting on the edge or anything. It has got to sit of course back in those slots and that all the way. Make sure it's routed right and then um, once that is done you can go in the car, fire it up, let it run. Probably a good idea is then to come up front and um, just check for noises, check for squeals and see how, run how she runs. Well, let's move on to this little puppy. It's a tractor, I know, but it's almost all the same. <laughs> Old cars um, also utilize uh, this sort of tensioner. Uh, a couple newer cars had it also, mostly for air conditioning compressors, uh, which this one is right here as well. And how these work is we have a bottom pivot, of course, tightened down, and we have a top pivot in this bracket and we have another nut or a bolt that will uh, tighten the compressor to this bracket. Now to adjust this we have this slotted hole and um, common sense will tell you you move the compressor into the machine it will loosen the belt and you move it out and you give tension on the belt. Okay and in order to move this although you loosened all three points you will end up uh, with either a ratchet which you can use right down here we have another socket like we did in the other tensioners so we can fit in a half inch drive ratchet which is awesome um, most of the time you don't even have this comfort and um, yeah you have to use a pry bar I guess uh, if you have to make sure you don't use it on vital parts of the compressor or alternator wherever you have this bracket on uh, make sure you find tough spots to pry on and if it's really tight then something's wrong you miss the bolt or um, it's binding or the belt is just already too tight it should not take too much force um, how you can double check is you um, tighten the belt of course so it won't droop and you tighten down your pivots which might even pull it a little bit tighter yet and you twist the belt twist it 90 degrees like this and if that is fairly easy it should take a little bit of force but um, it should not be too easy you should not be able to go past the 90 degrees then uh, it's pretty much perfect uh, if you're not sure if that is the right tension well just leave it a little bit loose and uh, looser and uh, run the machine if there's a squeal uh, make it tighter if it sounds fine just leave it uh, after it ran just double check it uh, did not jump over or um, yeah it's still on there so um, make sure you don't over tighten it you do not want to over tighten it if it's too loose nothing will happen the belt may catch and it may rip but at least your bearings will be fine if you do over tighten it you might screw this compressor and this particular one would be a twelve hundred dollar fix we would not want that so um, yeah make sure you got the right tension make sure when you pry on it that you do not force too hard on the housing or on the engine or sensors or anything that could be in the way make sure you use your pry bar wisely